So if you guys have been to Six Flags in Jackson, New Jersey, which I'm sure some of you watching this video have been there, you probably know the ride King Daka. Or if you don't know that ride, go look it up. Jackson, New Jersey, Six Flags, King Daka. And well, what we're looking at right here on Spy and Triple Q and all these indexes for that matter is exactly how the King Daka ride looks, right? We saw a huge pump into and during the FOMC press conference, right? Right after the statement came out, Jerome Powell, all that good stuff. And then we dumped massively pretty much after the press conference heading into close, which is nuts. Look at this here, guys. Spy went from 500 to 508, right back down to 500. And now we're actually almost into the 490s again here after the bell, which is nuts. So we're going to break down the charts here, some stocks that I'm looking at. And of course, we're going to cover the Federal Reserve, what's going on, Jerome Powell, the press conference, the FOMC, all that good stuff. So hit the like button guys make sure to subscribe and let's dive right into the video so it's not only on spy like i said guys triple q all of these look like king to ka from uh you know six flags here in new jersey and this is nuts man look triple q went from 420 all the way to 430 right back down to 420 at close so let's just get into what the heck is going on so of course the narrative heading into this year you guys know we've covered this before but the narrative was we were going to get i think the most rate cut somebody said was seven i mean come on guys if you thought we were going to get seven rate cuts this year i want whatever the heck you're smoking because that is insane nobody really thought we were going to get seven rate cuts this year but i guess the average was three rate cuts but are we even going to get three rate cuts now Probably not this year. Probably not, right? So the narrative has changed massively from the beginning of the year to where we are right now. And well, the federal funds rate has stayed the same as of this meeting. So you guys can see the central bank policymakers held steady on interest rates at the conclusion of their meeting, a move that was obviously widely expected by the markets. Nobody thought we were going to get rate hikes, obviously. And of course, nobody thought we were going to get a cut this go around. So the Fed funds target rate remains at its 5.25 to 5.5 range. And you guys can see the Federal Reserve called out a lack of further progress in getting inflation down to its 2% target which i guess that's not the best sign lack of further progress but look at the grand scheme of things here guys inflation cpi whether you believe it or not whatever i'm not a huge proponent of the cpi being uh the actual inf you know inflation number it leaves out a lot but let's be honest here it's come down a lot from 10 percent to three 3.5 whatever it is right now um yeah 3.5 roughly so you can't deny that jerome powell the fed they've done some things right for sure i mean that's debatable if they're doing enough or they should do uh, less whatever a lot of people can debate back and forth but in my eyes pal has done a pretty decent job um, you know getting inflation down and obviously inflation is still very sticky we're nowhere near that two two and a half percent target well I guess we are technically we're at three and a half percent four percent but it's gonna be tough getting back down uh, to that two two and a half percent which is why we're gonna see rates pretty much unchanged here in this five to, you know, five, five and a quarter, five and a half percent, we're going to see it stay here for a little bit. The market is currently anticipating the Federal Reserve's first rate cut will come in December, yet many forecasters are thinking July, which actually that's a big difference. Think about it. July is in two months. December is in what, seven months from now? And that's according to Jim Karen, Chief Investment Officer of the Portfolio Solutions Group at Morgan Stanley Investment Management. And he also said here, let me see, guys. Um, he said on Power Lunch on CNBC, the fly in the ointment, yeah, ointment, I, for some reason I couldn't read that for a second. The fly in the ointment is going to be the labor report. If the labor market starts to weaken, I think that advances the time scale for the Fed to start to cut earlier. And if the labor market stays strong, I think they're going to stay on probably until December, which makes sense. Um, yeah, complete uh, it makes complete sense. And again, if you thought we were going to get seven rate cuts this year, man, give me what you're smoking. I want some, right? So, so yeah, man, look, 
Fed slows pace of balance sheet reductions. You guys can see they said on Wednesday that they're going to slow the pace. It is allowing or they're allowing uh, maturing bond proceeds to roll off the balance sheet without reinvesting them. The program nicknamed Quantitative Tightening, QT, I'm sure you guys have heard that, began in June 2022 and has brought the balance sheet down to $7.4 trillion, $1.5 trillion less than its mid-22 peak, right? And again, this goes back to the debate, are they doing enough? Or, you know, Should they be doing more? Whatever. And Powell says inflation is still too high. He said a warning about sticky price pressures. He pretty much warned us. He said inflation is still too high. Further progress in bringing it down is not assured and the path forward is uncertain. And obviously, guys, Jerome Powell is not going to come out and be like, oh, yeah, for sure. We're going to get inflation down in two meetings from now. Obviously, he's data dependent. Nobody knows what's going to happen. He can't say something for certain uh, because, well, it just doesn't work like that. Nobody knows. But they're doing the best that they can, right, to keep inflation um, controlled. And I've always been a proponent of them not prematurely um, cutting the rates. So I'm actually happy with what they're doing right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, it's debatable. Could they do more? Could they do less? Or, you know, should they do more? Whatever. But yeah, it looks like Fed notes little progress towards 2% inflation goal and shows cuts not on horizon, according to bank rate analysts. And it looks like here the Fed's pro economy decision, according to Global X's Scott. Helfstein, he says that should reassure investors. He said, rather than a hawkish pivot, the Federal Reserve's move to keep rates steady is a pro-economy statement that could push equities higher. And the Fed is more concerned that inflation fails to fall in an accelerating economy, and that should be reassuring for investors. Let me say that one more time. The Fed is more concerned that inflation fails to a fall in an accelerating economy, and that should be reassuring for investors. Let me see here. What else is worth mentioning, guys? Okay, the labor market, we know we're going to keep a very close eye on the labor market. Powell says it's unlikely the next move is a rate hike. Oh, man, if we got a rate hike, that would not be good, obviously, um, for the stock market. Of course, it'd be good to fight inflation, to, to beat it down a little bit more, but stocks obviously would hate that. I mean, think about the narrative, right? We went from three to seven cuts this year to now we're getting a hike. I mean, geez, that's um, a big change in the narrative there. But yeah, guys, of course, he downplayed the stagflation concerns. I'm sure you guys saw it. He was like, um, I was around during stagflation and it's not what we're seeing today. That's what he's assume, or, um, what he's saying, right? Which is a bit debatable. Maybe we'll do a video solely on that in the future. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much what's going on right now. Interest rates are remaining the same, which we all expected, and we're not getting rate cuts. Essentially, if you're reading between the lines, anytime soon. We're really not at, at this point uh, by the looks of it. And of course, everything's data dependent. Things could change. Time will tell, but as of now, that's what happened. And initially, the stock market ripped, but now we're selling off again. And, well, it looks like all the indexes, except for, uh, what, the Dow and the Russell. So the S&P and the NASDAQ were down. The Russell and the Dow, they were in the green. So what do you guys think? Do we rebound here? Do we continue to see the sell-off that we got in the last 30 minutes of trading. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to subscribe. And if you guys want to see my Patreon portfolio, keep up with all the moves, full transparency, that's linked down below. You also get access to the Discord, my charts throughout the day, all that good stuff. So check it out, guys, at stasurfest.com slash Patreon. There's a QR code right here or, again, link down below. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys later.